Okay, so thank you very much. Um, my name is Carlos Ruiz. Um, I work for a company called Playens. Um, the presentation is going to be slightly different to other presentation, mostly because we are part of the industry. We, it's true that we um, participate in this kind of project just to provide or to transform innovations into innovative products to bring um, incremental innovations but also disruptive technologies into the company. But um, finally, we, we are part of the industry. Okay, So the purpose of this presentation will be to present the different technology that we use in our commercial products, which is mainly related to semantic web technologies, natural language processing, and, and search system um, as a way to, to show how we plan to collaborate with um, other members of the Essence Consortium. OK, so um, originally, Playance is a spin-off of the Semantic Technology Institute, Institute in Innsbruck. And the initial founders of the company were um, uh, PhD students there uh, applying or developing new technologies around semantic web services and uh, exploitation of games for semantic content, and, um, content creation. However, the headquarters are uh, in Madrid now. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from Madrid, and the uh, people related to this project will be uh, located in Madrid. And we have um, a commercial department with some customers like Repsol, Shin, or Santillana, where we apply semantic web te technologies. But we also participate in R&D projects, like the Toscan Pre project related to broadcasters and uh, media production companies. Uh, maybe, uh, Maven, mo much more related to uh, multimedia analysis and other, other domains like cloud destination related to uh, tourism. And basically the main, uh, the main goal of our technology is uh, to provide tools for improving the information access. Here, um, I mean they use not only uh, in terms of uh, a structure, what is known as uh, an structured content. Here we mean uh, documents and, and text, but also multimedia. The main reason is that um, we, we plan or we want to go beyond the traditional approach where we have keywords or where we are based on, on terms and we create additional layers to deal with semantic information, to deal with, to deal with um, what is called as entry-centric model. I think somebody um, mentioned this, this term before. Uh, but at the same time, we um, want to provide um, good quality, quality results um, in, in, in a good response time. Um, in general, this, this uh, kind of technology has been applied in what is called the enterprise search, uh, where you have repositories um, across the different offices and so on. Um, you analyze them and provide tools to search the content within the company. But also, we, as I said, we, we have customers in other domains where we use our technology as, as part of the back end. And the, th the three main pillars of our technology can be the semantic web, as I said, where we, in most of the cases, we model the uh, domain using ontologies, and we use uh, different layers, uh, semantic layers, for uh, inter interoperability and integration purposes. The second part is um, related to content analysis. Uh, here we, we use natural language processing with textual resources, but we also um, apply multimedia mining to, uh, um, I mean, for, for the analysis of uh, videos, uh, audios, and, and images. And with all this information, we, we uh, apply semantic annotation, uh, where we use the ontologies defined, uh, defined in the domain. And the, the, the third pillar is about the search, where we um, provide semantic indexing and search functionalities, and also where, where we try to um, provide to the user what is called the exploratory-based um, visualization tools, where the user can refine instead of having the list of results and try to figure out the next query to get better results. You can apply filters uh, using the domain ontology in order to, to get better results. Well, I, I have to say that this, this issue around the semantic search is, is not new. Um, uh, companies like Google or Yahoo are trying to include this, this domain, this, this field, into their products um, as a way to enhance the results, but also to uh, provide 
um, some guidance in the search process in, in terms of the different entities that you have. For example, nowadays, if you go to Google, you will see on the right that for every query you have, they try to uh, get information out of the, of the query in terms of entities, uh, uh, people, locations, events, and so on. That's something to display on the right. And basically, because having this kind of, this kind of information, yeah, it, it provides um, positive results in terms of um, in terms of SEO, in terms of um, which results are, are highlighted, which, are, which results are at the top of my list of results, and so on. Having in mind these three, three main pillars, what we have is a, a platform where we have um, where we are able to to ingest content, apply um, uh, content analysis processes for the textual resources, but also for multimedia, and where we provide um, a unique semantic index, uh, which can be used in several places. In most of the, in most of the cases, what we have is uh, this, this uh, workflow. Every time, um, it's, it's, uh, it's quite typical in the broadcasting, but can be applied in other, in other domains, where you, you have content, uh, the new new content is, is coming in the, the, the system. We run different um, content-based uh, content analysis processes. We provide semantic annotation in our system, and then we provide the the final layer with the semantic search. Okay, so if we go to the first part, to the uh, the part where we use the the semantic web technologies, um, in our case we we always deal with uh, a domain ontology. For every um, application that we have, do, we, we model with the domain experts the, the domain, and we come up with um, an ontology. Uh, uh, for that reason, we use, uh, or for that purpose, we use the, the usual technology provided by the Worldwide uh, Web Consortium. We use um, standards like RDF or OWL. And the main reason for using the domain ontology is that is. Um, this domain model fits better with uh, the problem we want to address. Um, uh, and in most of the cases, that means that we can structure uh, uh, all the knowledge uh, which is contained in the, in, the, um, in the different repositories. In this case, we are able to, to understand that part, of the, um, that part of the documents within the repository are about dogs um, and has some relationship with um, other animals like cat. Um, and with all that information, we can also uh, interlink the content that we have with external information, maybe from DBpedia, from Free, or from Freebase, uh, mainly with the purpose of using all that information as part of the search process. So uh, we extend every time we query the system internally. We try to understand what the uh, what the um, user's intent is in the query, but we also try to find related information like um, uh, parents. Siblings and so on, in order to to increase the accuracy and, and recall of the of the query, but also because having all this information can be useful for for, for uh, the user. For example, when in one of the examples that we have, where we we work with um, Santillana, they want to they, they have a, a huge database with uh, knowledge about the different educational uh, resources, with different educational resources, but they want to link that information with other information available on the internet. Uh, because that's useful to find additional information that's useful to, to keep the learning process um, ongoing and so on. It's something that we also do with, um, with um, the actions. Okay? So we, we try to identify the different actions uh, and the actors within the documents in order to provide all that information to the to them, uh, search system. And the third part that we usually do uh, with uh, semantic web technology is we obviously um, uh, this is a, a real example in the in the broadcasting um, domain where we use uh, for example the media ontology to describe media assets. So um, here we have a, a media asset with um, uh, an identifier. We we say or we state the that this element is a media resource. We use the media ontology to say that um, has a title and a location, but we also um, uh, relate that information with uh, the domain ontology. In this case, uh, it's, the, it's the news department in a broadcaster saying that um, uh, in this media asset uh, or this media asset, uh, you can find the 
the uh, entity Prince Williams, basically, that this media asset is annotated with that particular entity from the domain, from the domain ontology. We also use different labels, which are then used as part of the semantic um, search system to deal with different, with different um, uh, languages. But this information is also related to external, to external sources. We use common vocabularies like uh, friend of a friend, uh, and this kind of technology allows us to link with information provided, for example, uh, from DBpedia. Another thing that we use, or another things that we use the semantic web technologies, is to um, um, to solve the semantic gap between the what we get from the visual um, content analysis services and what we have in our system. So, for example, we have um, in in this case we have. Um, uh, um, partners providing uh, genre detection or partners providing uh, automatic speed recognition and we integrate all that information using um, semantic web technologies, so using ontologies. For example, if um, the genre detection uh, says that the media asset is about uh, daily news, we use the, um, the EVU uh, ontology, which is a standard in the media production environment, or, um, um, to uh, to annotate the media assets saying that, uh, well, it's net daily news. It's something similar we do with, with the automatic speed recognition, where it's a previous step where we get the transcripts, and then we, we run um, natural language processing to identify the different entities and to uh, annotate the content use different, different time annotations. So when we have textual resources, uh, the process is slightly different. We have multimedia, multimedia because the kind of processes that we run are, are different. But when we have um, textual resources, what we apply is uh, natural language processing. So basically, we have several uh, NLP pipelines um, where we try to detect the, uh, the 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 language of the of the text, mainly using um, some kind of uh, classifiers and. Um, and some um, linguistic resources, and then we apply different steps um, depending on the on the language at hand. So we have tokenizers where we uh, remove all all the stop words, where we remove the punctuation marks, and where we get the the, the single words. Then we uh, split the different sentences. We uh, try to get the, the stem and the lemma of the of the different terms. And then we go through uh, the phrasing and the post tiger, and then we finally try to identify um, the type, the type of element of the term. For example, if um, we, um, if Kate Middleton is a person, or we talk about a company. And the final step is uh, similar, where we try to apply uh, ontologies to identify the um, what element um, we, we, are uh, we are taking. For example, Kate Middleton is a term, but what we finally finally give to the search system is the, the entity itself, the uh, identifier of this, of this entity. And then we, all this linguistic and semantic annotation uh, go to the uh, search system where we create what is called a semantic inverted index, uh, which is used later on for the retrieval, for the retrieval of, um, of, uh, of, the, of, the media, of the media assets. This is, for example, um, a, a real example that we have in, in the context of education, where um, I'll, I'll talk later on about um, the, the project itself, but where we have a semantic mo model defined or uh, narrow by um, a company, depending on the different um, educational goals that um, a student might have, depending on, on their age, and where we basically take all the resources from this company, from Santillana, and we annotate the, the, um, the resources with this, with the, with this um, semantic model. However, one, one of the problems that we usually have when we try to, to apply this approach is that we have amb ambiguity. So we, we try, um, here, the problem is that sometimes you, you, you might find something like Ronaldo scored a goal. It might refer to Cristiano Ronaldo, but also to Ronaldo, the, the Brazilian player. So in this case, we don't have contextual evidence uh, of what Ronaldo might be. But for example, if we had something like if Steve Jobs explained the plans of Apple, it might be different, different um, entities. It might be the, the fruit, the Apple, but also might be uh, two different companies, Apple Inc. or Apple, Apple Records. But basically here, in this, this kind of sentence, we, we might use 
um, Steve Jobs as, a, as an evidence of what um, Apple might, might be, in this case, the technology, the, the technology company. We here use different, different approaches trying to, to solve this, this problem. On the one hand, we have the, something that was mentioned this morning, the semantic distance. So basically, when we have um, different entities, it may, it, we use um, the distance between them to identify which is the right one. For example, if we have um, IT, uh, it makes sense that um, this entity is close to uh, technical support or software development. Uh, but, for, but, but it will be far from other entities like, like food or drinks. Um, so in that case, it, it would be make sense to disambiguate any entity with, with um, the one corresponding, uh, or the one which is closer to, to technical support and software development. Um, the second part that we use that sometimes happens, or it's, it's um, something we use in the education um, um, exa example that I will explain later, is that we uh, put uh, certain uh, weights to, to certain uh, relationships, just to give um, an extra relevance to, to some of these relationships. Um, two other approaches that, that we have tried in the past was the first one related to classification algorithms. Um, this, morning, this morning I also mentioned that some people use Wikipedia um, to create this model, so we basically did something similar. We tried to, we analyze um, um, different resources with annotated content, and we use um, these resources to create um, uh, classification models in order to determine, um, in, in order to use these classification models to uh, disambiguate the entities. And the second part is, is based on, on um, crowdsourcing uh, mechanisms, where we have um, different uh, editors, for example, providing feedback about how the, the disambiguation um, has been if uh, the disambiguation was right or not, and um, using this informa inform information, exploiting this information as an input for the classification algorithms. The second part, or, or after we have all these, these all the all the different resources uh, analyzed, and um, we get the different annotations. What we um, what we do, we, we usually create what is called the semantic inverted index. So we we take all the different uh, type of annotations, the linguistic annotations, um, the visual features, and also the semantic annotations provided by the um, by the uh, OER, the ontology um, uh, based entity recognizer, and um, we create the semantic inverted index. We expand, it's, it's, what we use here is not only the information that we receive, but we also expand the information that we have in domain ontology, trying to um, provide or creating in, or, or including in the index um, related, in, uh, related annotations, related entities. Um, the example that, the, that, uh, that is included here is that if we, found, if we find accommodation, we also include other related entities like hotel or camping because that information will be used when, when, the, user, when the user queries the system um, to provide, uh, to have a, um, a better list of results. And the final step that we usually have is the um, search engine itself, where we go through an um, established workflow where we try to identify the language of the query, and depending on that, we we run through uh, a step called the query analyzer where we try to, uh, similar to what we have in the annotation process, we try to, to understand the entities uh, within the, the query, um, expand the, um, the query with related information that we, we might found in the ontology. As I said, if we have accommodation, it makes sense that we try to find hotels, for example. And then we try, we, um, we have a modification of the traditional TF, IDF, um, a scoring function where we boost the semantic annotation and semantic relationships. So we we um, we use the solar, the traditional solar information retrieval system, and we we um, uh, use as any information retrieval system works. So we use a scoring fu a function modified according to these to these um, semantic relationships, and then we we provide a list of results basically. And with this list of results, uh, one of the things that we do is that we, uh, instead of having this one-shot process where the user needs to figure out 
uh, which will be the best query according to the results. We uh, led users to um, filter and re refine the results, but also to include new um, information through the visualization of the ontology. So here, it's important that the, in, in most of the cases, the ontology is, is huge. So we don't pretend to overwhelm the users with uh, new complexity. And instead of that, we usually apply some different uh, metaphors to, um, to navigate and browse the the, um, the ontologies. So we can facilitate what is called the serendipity, the um, making discoveries almost by chance or by accident. Um, in, the ex in this example, the user might start querying the system with something quite simple like Sun, and depending on the different on how he explores or he or she explores the different relationships, um, he can go from Sun to Mars, um, the planet, then to um, the Roman mythology and the different um, um, and the different uh, representations and uh, final, finalized in the painting of uh, Louis XIV and, and his family. Okay, But also it might explore the, the, the graph in a different way and go directly from the sun to, uh, the, uh, to Louis XIV of France, which receives the same name, the, the, the uh, sun uh, king. And from that point, going to, to, the, to the painting of Louis the family and, and his family. So some examples of this is um, this, these two um, examples that we have uh, in, different, in different domains. On the left, we have what we call the relationship uh, viewer. So basically, every time you query the system, you get a list of results. And depending of this, of this information, we, we provide a contextual graph. So we don't displace all, all the entities and relationships that you might find, you might find if you go through the list of results, but only the most relevant ones according to, to your query. So this graph on the left is um, um, provides, for example, in this case, the entities related to a query like Kay Middleton. Um, so uh, people like um, uh, Charles, um, Charles the, 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 the prince, or uh, other people attending, for example, to, to her wedding. And what we have on the right is another example where instead of having this kind of relationship, um, we try to group the different domains. So the user can choose the different levels of granularity. So at the beginning, we group all the results according to uh, high level groups, and the user can go further um, to more, more uh, particular information in, in one of these domains, for example, in science. Going to uh, particular projects, um, all this technology has been used. Um, I, I will cover three different three different domains: the education, the uh, broadcasting, and the question answering in 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 media retrieval. retrieval. So in this case, we have um, a project with Santillana where we applied this technology. So Santillana is one of the biggest publishers in Spain and has. Um, and basically, the uh, the profit the profit around books is not as good as it used to be. So they went to uh, to to create a new e-learning portal, um, where instead of having resources and um, similar to what you have in in a book, they would like to to have something um, totally different. So what we do there is we we take all the, the resources they have. We apply all these technologies, we apply natural language processing and semantic web technologies in order to relate the different elements, in order to facilitate, for example, pro uh, teachers to create, to find and create new new um, educational resources. And we also provide all these visualization stuff where the, the student can discover new new uh, topics, um, which at the beginning were, uh, were not uh, explicit in the, in the um, educational lecture. Uh, but one of the problems that we have is that the, this data, the, all these resources are, are not well um, annotated. So they, they, they have no way to exploit all the knowledge there. Um, at the same time, they, they, they would like to um, uh, link the information they have with, all, with other external information, for example, Europeana. Um, and in the end, they would like to automate all this process as much as possible. Um, now, for example, they have like 100 editors annotating the content every time they put new content into the into the previous system they had. They annotate all the content. They go through the the, the web page, trying to say, okay, this is um, uh, 
uh, Boris Becker, the tennis player, or this is um, uh, Napoleon Bonaparte, the, the French emperor, and so on. So it's very time consuming, so they would like to reduce uh, all these annotation process as much as possible. So basically what we did, uh, what we did there uh, is we uh, created a, a domain ontology. Uh, mainly, uh, one of the things that they wanted was to uh, take care of the information available in the system. So they didn't want anything outside of the traditional uh, learning objectives that somebody might have um, uh, for students between 10 and 18 years, um, years old. So basically, they wanted things like Spanish uh, literature or uh, like um, uh, art and so on. But for example, they don't want anything related to um, to porn stars, porn stars, which might be might sound quite strange, but uh, one of the things that we, we that we did was, for example, get all the information from Freebase and Wikipedia, and it happens that some of them are at the same time at the same time annotated as um, actors and actresses. Um, so we created all, all that information. We remove all. All, all the information which is not directly uh, related to the learning objectives of the platform. We also define different levels of granularity depending on, on, on what the uh, people from Santillana wanted. And we run the different annotation and uh, indexing process, uh, processes. So in this case, we had around um, uh, more than one, uh, 100,000 resources, educational resources. We had more than uh, I don't have the the uh, concrete number, but we had more than two million annotations of resource of resources, and at the same time they wanted to have editors in 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 the crowd. So we provided some tools to allow them to modify the or to include new new semantic annotations based on the uh, domain ontologies that we had, and we came up with this with this um, platform where. Uh, every time the user queries the system, the system pro uh, provides several suggestions in terms of uh, the possible entities um, that you might refer. For example, I started here uh, typing uh, Leon, which is Lion in Spanish, and the system uh, suggested that I might be interested in Fray Luis de Leon, um, a poet and writer. Um, when, when the user uh, selects the, uh, any entity, in addition to the, to the list of results, and giving some information about why uh, this is part of the list of results. We also provide on, on the right the list or the different connections with other, with other elements of the, um, of the platform. And we have something similar to this one where we can see um, Fray Luis de Leon in this case related with other entities. Um, and the user can, can browse this, this, um, this uh, visualization uh, and discover new elements uh, which at, at the beginning wasn't uh, easy to, 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 to find um, in order to exploit what is called, as I said, um, serendipity. Um, the second domain or second example um, in a commercial, in a commercial um, uh, project that we have is around broadcasting. So one of the, the tools that we, have, that we have is called Tains Media. And basically, we uh, try to cover that initial workflow that I explained at the beginning, where we have um, media items coming in. Um, and we apply several uh, processing steps and we generate the different annotation and search functionalities. So here the, the, the problem is that this, this kind of workflow really fits into the, the uh, needs of media production and, and broadcasters, where they have very complex, very complex workflows of um, new media items coming in, where they, they try to, to check the quality of these media items and where they, they, they try to uh, provide annotations and provide methods to find these these uh, media assets in the future, and at the same time, they 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 want they, they they want to use different languages because in some in some cases part of the media items come from from um, other partners outside of the country, and where the people who annotate the content is different to the people who will exploit the content uh, because some of them are uh, people in charge of the archive, but all the other people uh, trying to find the content will be editors, for example, and. Uh, we we developed the, this this tool, which is called, as I said, uh, Plains Media, where the user uh, queries the system, gets the user results, gets not only the list of results but also uh, the reasons for for that, why um, why you can find the uh, that entity in particular, um, how that entity, or you can uh, go directly to that particular frame in the media asset to 
to, to find um, the proper frame and so on. And on the left, what we have is the, um, the relationship viewer that I explained before. So basically, the, the user queries the system, get the list of results, and what we have uh, on the left is totally contextual depending on, on, on the query and the list of results. So every time I, I change the query, I have a different, a different uh, contextual graph, but I, I can also uh, directly, I don't, I don't need to go through the list of results to understand the, the um, to understand the, the, the content. I only need to uh, take a look at the graph to see, okay, my initial query was uh, Kate Middleton, but I see that also that other people, uh, let's assume that I'm, I'm trying to create a clip about the, the royal wedding. So um, I tried Kate Middleton, and I, then I discovered that some famous people went to the, to the ceremony, for example, Elton John, um, and I only need to use this, this graph. So this information is displayed. I can directly click on this, this element and modify me, my query, uh, refining the, the initial list of results that I had. Um, and the, 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 the final, the final ex the example is um, a project that we had um, around question answering in, in media. So um, this project was, was part of our collaboration with um, um, Soma TV, a Canadian um, production company, but basically it happens that broadcasters like uh, HBO uh, are devoting a lot of time trying to uh, engage um, their customers. Um, for example, they, they, try, they try a game around the, the Games of Thrones uh, TV series, where they basically uh, try to um, invite them to annotate the content, to uh, interact with the, with the characters and so on. So uh, we, we built a platform trying to, to achieve this, this, uh, this idea. Um, it, it was mainly divided into two different parts. The first one was, was similar to um, the one I, uh, um, we've seen before, where the user might find um, clips of the different episodes of the, of the TV series, of the Games of Thrones, basically. Okay, I would like to know, I would like to see all the video clips where this character appears. And the second part is related to um, a question answering system where um, we try to, to create a sort of uh, dialogue system where the user might query the system, or might try the natural language question um, in order to, to get information, not, not, not to retrieve the uh, particular media asset, but, but to retrieve information about the, the Games of Thrones series. So we, we modeled the domain again. Um, we only covered the first season. Um, we we tried to to take into account the different elements um, like scenes, episodes, uh, characters, um, and so on. And at the same time, we we modeled the different uh, characters and the relationship between them. And we tried to to uh, model the different kind of questions. So we we follow a template-based approach um, where uh, the user might um, ask for uh, four types of different actions where we uh, use Word, um, WordNet to um, get the list of possible um, synonyms um, and also in terms to, um, of, what was the funny part? <laughs> well, basically, yeah. So if you know, if you... <laughs> Well, um, well, maybe if um, I'm not quite sure if you are familiar with the uh, with Games of Thrones. So the the reason is that all these verbs and action were uh, needed to to model to model the uh, the TV series. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm, I'm I know that'd be fun, but it seems that but it seems that the ser uh, it's about sex, uh, killing people, and so yeah. Well, I have to say that it was needed. Um, so basically, as I said, we, we, we tried a template-based approach where we defined um, four types of different, of different questions. Um, things like, who are the sons of Edward Stark? Um, um, or things which are um, about topics that somebody else sh should know. Uh, for example, um, uh, asking somebody if uh, somebody else uh, killed somebody or similar things. These are some, some of the examples that we had. Um, and basically the interaction was, was quite simple. 
So what we had was we, we, we received the query by the user. We tried to, to check if uh, the question was related or, or was part of any of the templates that we had. If we had something like a perfect match, uh, we uh, send back the results to the, to the, um, to the user. But if not, we try to, uh, we provided the users with um, some tools to, um, to create a new template, basically. And we, we finally had something similar to this, to this um, user interface where you, you, you might choose the different uh, characters um, um, and you can send them different questions. Basically, in this case, the question was, who is the son of the king? Um, and there, it seems that there are three different, um, oh, there are, there are three, three sons, or three answers to the question, because there are three sons. Pardon? It is, because, <laughs> well, one, one of the points, that, I don't know, it's, it's, well, basically, one of the problems that we had, it's a tricky question because um, in, in our technology, we, are not, we, we, we don't work with, quite well with something happening now, something that happened in the past. So this is quite simple in, in the sense that the sun is a sun, more or less. Um, but one of the problems that we have here is that uh, some things were in the past and some things were, uh, will be in the future. So um, we, in most of our cases, we rely on um, name and entity recognition, but we, we don't exploit all the linguistic information that we, we might have in the natural interaction. So that's, that's a problem we, that we have. Um, but in terms of, um, of um, the things, well, uh, I try to, to show some, some of the technology that we have and some of the technology that we plan to use or to um, evolve for in, in this project. As I said at the beginning, uh, we, um, we are open to um, transfer or to, to create new disrupt, disruptive technology for the company. So this is only what we do, but it doesn't mean that we'll, it will be uh, the, uh, the only ways to, to uh, or the, the only things that we, we plan to work on in this, in this project. Um, things that we would like to, to, to check or that we would like to analyze if we, we can uh, provide something else in terms of disambiguation, that's something we talked this morning. Uh, there are some general disambiguation methods, mainly based on uh, Wikipedia and classification algorithms. Um, our opinion and um, our tests uh, show that uh, general methods, methods are okay, but sometimes they don't, they don't um, work well on particular domains. So it's something we would like to, um, to analyze or extend or to, to, to see if we can work on that. We have problems with knowledge evolution and sometimes uh, I mean, this has implications in, in the annotation and the search process, mainly because sometimes the king is recognized as, in this case, Robert uh, Baratheon, but sometimes uh, it's recognized as somebody else. Um, um, another, med another problem that we usually have is um, when we um, try to interlink with external sources, uh, resources, um, we have plans to uh, define the levels of granularity, it's something um, we, we were talking this morning with um, Gabor, uh, basically. We would like to see how we can uh, deal with automatic methods, methods to uh, define the, the scope of the, of the interlinking. And as I said before, I mean, most of our, our uh, techniques or most, most of our um, applications rely on uh, name entity um, recognition. Um, and we have problems to uh, to understand a complex question, or um, or one of the things that we, we um, are trying to uh, come up is to provide some more sophi sophisticated di di dialogue systems. And basically, um, the previous experience that we have is, is something quite simple, something that we would like to improve, for example. And I think that's that's all I have. I'd like to know um, how, so you presented uh, your NLP pipelines and you talked about your domain ontologies. Mm -hmm. I understand that you did NLP in at least in two languages, Spanish and English, right? Yeah, we have, we, we work with several languages, not only with Spanish and, and English, but also with um, German, with some local languages um, like Catalonian. Yep. Okay, so the question is, um, how do you connect these two? 
How do you connect uh, your... Uh... No, the reality is that we don't have connection. We, we have several pipelines for several languages. So at the beginning we have, if we go to this... To this um, To this image, uh, you will see that the first that the first step is to detect the language. So basically, depending on, on that, we define several languages for each um, so, sorry several pipelines for each language. And in each workflow, in each uh, pipeline, we use different linguistic resources. Okay, but at the end of the pipeline, you you have DB, DBpedia or uh, or another ontology that mm -hmm. you're using, which is. Um, Okay. okay, so DBpedia, yes, has, uh, has several language uh, exactly. versions. So, exactly, so that's the answer. So basically when we go at the end, what we um, use is the different multilingual information from uh, DBpedia or from Freebase, for example. Uh, it's something I tried to, to explain in this, um, in this picture, in this real example. Um, here where it can be part of the domain ontology, but also it can, it can be part of the external resources. So basically here you can see Okay, thanks. Yeah, I just wanted to point out two uh, very interesting connections that I that I saw. I mean, one is the one uh, with uh, Gabor's talk, where you know, on the one hand, we have kind of, I would say, deeper ontological knowledge on the Trento side, but here you have more linkage between uh, different. How should I say, different. Uh, data facets or different things. And the other connection, and I don't know if, uh, if Enrique will agree, but uh, you know, things, uh, one could ask the question, are things like DBpedia, is, is that the actual real concept? And then we have uh, things that are connected to it as signs. I mean, could we go so far to say that, you know, something like the Prince William on DBpedia is actually Prince William, is actually the you know, so the URI that represents him is sufficiently, sufficiently generalized from all things, people, names use for him. Yeah, so a very simple concept. I mean, so he's an instance, but I mean, DBpedia also has things like, I mean, so let's take the category prints, uh, right? So, I mean, I'm wondering if there is a connection there that you could see that things converge from the point of view of in fact, having some knowledge bases as a gold standard, does it? <laughs> um. So, for example, the multilingual thing would be an example, right? So, we could say that the two speakers who have an automated dictionary are uh, two people who need to converge on a concept, but in fact, they don't really understand each other's language, so what they converge on is this common grounding. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, about, about golden standards, one of the things that we, we found when um, we, or we, we find when we work with DBPD and Freebase is that the information is too general, that it's quite difficult to use as it is, right, as, as, as it is. So basically, something that you can find is that um, a nickname for, for Barack Obama is the one. Okay, uh, maybe it's right, but uh, it's something that we don't use, in, for example, in uh, an educational context. So every time that uh, the one appears, doesn't mean that, uh, I mean, it doesn't mean that uh, that entity is Barack Obama or that that term is Barack, Ob Barack Obama. Um, So uh, that's the reason I mean, because in most of the cases we I need mean, to, context, to curate context, exactly uh, we need to curate the to curate the ontologies the domain ontologies. Or, 